I'm Janet Cox from Fossil Free California, and I'm so excited that you're all here. This is going to be a really exciting couple of panels that are going to change the world. I'm not really exaggerating. We're thrilled to have Bill McKibben here, and Ellen Dorsey, and Catherine Howarth. They will be introduced to you shortly. This is going to be really interesting, and we're just I'm just so happy to see everybody here. I'll just keep gushing, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Over to Bill and Catherine and Ellen. Thank you all. This really is a grand occasion to be here. Um, uh, when we talk about, do, I don't know, does everybody still read Tom Sawyer um, <laughs> growing up? You know the amazing scene in Tom Sawyer where he uh, whitewashes the fence and uh, and shows himself to have be having so much fun doing it that he's able to convince everybody else to come actually do the rest of the whitewashing of the whole fence. That's how I feel like with divestment. I am, I you know, it's true that if some of us sort of at the very beginning kind of got it going, but then I've happily stepped back and let everybody else do immense and huge amounts of labor. And that, all that labor all over the world has paid off in the most extraordinary ways. Um, uh, maybe Ellen, I can recap a little bit the sort of what you and everybody else were talking about yesterday at this kind of celebration we did of where we are at the moment. There are now over a thousand institutions around the planet that have divested from fossil fuel with $6.24 trillion, is that right? Roughly, yep, yep. Um, uh, uh, which is an unbelievably large sum of money, like literally unbelievable. I mean, we had no idea when we began this that it, it would grow to anything like that size. Now the kind of um, the 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 charismatic institutions that 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 are are, are taking this up month after month, um, um, each one of them spurs it on to sort of greater heights. It's really powerful to have Dan Zarilli here, and uh, you'll hear from him later today uh, to talk about New York City, uh, who's decision to divest in January of this year was an epic moment in this campaign. And um, just when we thought that would uh, be the, the sort of talking point of the whole year along to almost match it came the remarkable news that the entire country of Ireland had decided to divest. And each one of these took enormous amounts of work from all sorts of people on the ground. Um, um, none of this, I mean, these conversations have to be started and nurtured over the course of years in place after place in, because when we started, and this is the kind of point I'm beginning to, this was a kind of new idea that seemed uh, a, a little scary and whatever to the boards and trustees and politicians and whoever were in the way. The point that I think we should be making this afternoon is that's no longer the case. We've now passed some kind of intellectual tipping point with divestment where really one should have a harder time explaining why they're not divesting than why they are, okay? At this point, sheer logic of every kind, from financial logic, the at this point obvious uh, uh, obvious data showing that it's a uh, smart financial decision to the moral logic that's been clear from the beginning points you in the direction of divesting. And the real question is, why would anyone at this point any longer want to be invested in that small band of rogue firms whose business model <coughs> carried out to its conclusion would destroy the one planet that we have. So I think that there'll be no problem meeting the target that Ellen has set for us all of 10 trillion by 2020. Um, 
more to the point, I think that there'll be no problem driving this conversation further and further and further into more and more and more places. We celebrate when we win these divestment fights. But you know what? Even when we don't win them, we win them. Because the sheer act of raising these questions over and over again, putting them in the face of the powerful and the rich and the connected, uh, uh, even campaigns that haven't won yet, Abby, I'm looking at you, um, um, pe that people have put incredible amounts of effort into have been a, just as much a part of this uh, uh, success uh, as, as the campaigns that have so far succeeded. And so I guess what I'm trying, I think that one of the places where we're gonna move the ball forward today sort of help this conversation go on to the next uh, level is by talking about what it now means to be a fiduciary, how we're coming to understand that in a different light, in a sense, than we did just a few years ago. Um, when I started talking about it some years ago, the best that I could do to kind of express it was to say, it clearly made no sense to be planning people's planning for uh, uh, people's retirement funds by producing a planet on which it would not be worth retiring. <laughs> that it was not f sensible in any larger sense to be paying for someone's college education with investments in companies that would render the world an impossible place for people to carry out whatever profession they'd been trained for, you know? That those very sort of, but now we've reached the point where that, we've got a sharper point on those questions, where we're able to frame them in ways that are financially and legally powerful too. And that's really, I think, um, um, what we want to talk about uh, uh, as much as possible here. So I'm gonna shut up um, so that we can listen to the people who are um, really doing heavy lifting on this topic. Catherine Howarth from the UK from Share Action is doing uh, unbelievable work and, and I have no doubt that uh, there are plenty of um, boards of trustees that um, um, shake a little when her name is mentioned. Uh, <laughs> just as I know that people are, that Ellen Dorsey has scared the heck out of all kinds of people who deserve to have the heck scared out of them. Uh, she and uh, her colleagues, people like Clara Vondrich, have just managed to, to, to take this issue in new directions. And so I, I know, I, I, you know, I see my colleagues, Jamie Henn and Brett Fleischman up there who have worked on this from the very start. I know that we're really curious to kind of hear the latest about how these things are developing in your mind. So I'm gonna sit down by asking the the question really of maybe of both of you, but uh, 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 just starting off with you, Alan, just explain why it is that fossil fuel, at this point, that it's the exact opposite of being a fiduciary to invest in fossil fuel. Is that okay? Yeah. 